Did you know? School Sport Victoria offers 650,000 sporting opportunities in 31 different sports. At 10,700 events across the state every single year. That's a lot of kids playing sport. And for over 25 years, the Victorian School Sports Awards have recognised more than 1,500 students, teachers and volunteers for excellence and outstanding contribution to school sport. Now that's a champion effort. Morgan Mitchell with us today, Team Vic alumni and superstar. She's been to a lot of championships, but she's also a movie star as well. We'll talk about that in just a second. Welcome, Morgan Mitchell. Hello. Thank you for having me, everyone. I'm excited to be here. No worries, it's really good. Today is a bit of a different day. We've got um, some classrooms that are going to be tuning in to ask you some questions. So some of those questions have been submitted. I'm sure there are going to be sensible questions, but we've got some classrooms that are going to be joining us. That's pretty special. Morgan Mitchell, you have a bigger following than you possibly know. <laughs> So let's talk about Morgan Mitchell's achievements first. In 2012, you went to the World Championships in Barcelona in 14, World Championships in the Bahamas. Then 2014, Com Games, brilliant effort there. 2015, World Relays again in Bahamas. Then 2015, World Championships in China. 2016, Olympic Games in Brazil. 2017, World Relays again in the Bahamas. 2017 World Championships, 2018 World, uh, sorry, Commonwealth Games, 2019 World Relays in Japan, and 2019 World Championships in Qatar. That is quite an international achievement <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you say, you know, when you reel it all off like that, it does. It reminds me of how great I need to be for, you know, the career I've had, but it also reminds me of my age. <laughs> Oh, you are you are certainly not that old. And we'll talk about when it all started for you, but this is a pretty exciting for you. Out of all the victories you've had, which yeah. one would you class as the sweetest victory for Morgan Mitchell? The sweetest one is definitely 2016, the Olympic Games trials. Um, I went into that final with an Olympic qualifier. I won all 12 races for that season in the 400 and I knew if I crossed the line in first, you know, I get to live out my dream of going to the Olympics and for me, fortunately I did um, and it was just, it was cool because after it was just a big party with all my friends. <laughs> well, look, we've actually got the footage here of the 2014 and the 2016 final. Uh, I, I know you like the 2014. I certainly love the 2016 final. That was nothing to sneeze at either. I don't know. For me, it's just like, it, I think it's a nice memory like, Wow, I've worked so hard. I, you know, ticked all these boxes. I'm living out my childhood dream, and I don't know to relive it is actually quite nice, to be honest. Because obviously there's no Olympics this year, so I've got to look back on something. Now, speaking of childhood dream, when did it all become real to you, or when did you think, you know, I, I could potentially represent my country? Um, it's funny because I always thought from the age of six I was going to go to the Olympics. Um, it was just something I, a goal I had at. Um, that age, but it wasn't until, I reckon it wasn't until I won the 2012 World Junior title, like, uh, sorry, national title to qualify for World Juniors. That was when I was just like, oh, you know, my old coach, Berkey and I, we did that off of maybe three, two, three months training max, not even, um, after four years out of the sport. And I think that's when we both sat down and realized like, yeah, this is, this is the right choice. Pretty amazing stuff, pretty amazing stuff. Now, we've got some very eager beaver students that are just about to join us, but before we get on to those students there, and they're, they're, they're pretty keen, just tell us, where did it all start for you? Because obviously you started as a young age and you were sel uh, selected for Team Vic yeah. in quite a number of teams, and you can tell us how many in a second, but where did it all start? What age did it start for you? It started for me at six years old at Werribee Little Athletics, back when it was a grass track, which is, again, showing my age. Um, and I just did it because back then it was a thing to do. It was the year 2000, and that's when the Olympics were on. So, yeah, mum signed us up. Now, how many Team Vic teams have you been selected in yourself? 
So I was selected in about eight, I think, from memory for school sport because it was, um, yeah, cross country and track and field with cross country obviously being my first team. Yeah. Gotcha. So you obviously, you know, thinking back at, at 12 years old, you decided to hang the boots up, the, the spikes, and get into netball. What was that? What was the motivation behind that decision? Yeah, um, I think it was back when my older sister had made a few state teams for netball and were very competitive. Um, and I knew I was just as good as net, at, just as good at netball as I was with athletics. So I kind of wanted to tick that box and see how far I could get because I was, could obviously still train for both. Um, so yeah, and then I kind of also lost the love for athletics just a little bit, if I can be honest. Um, and just wanted to try other things and make new friends, but I don't regret it at all. Cause, you know, I think obviously in the end it was all worth it. Very good. Melbourne girls, you should see them on the screen there, Morgan. Melbourne girls, yeah. are, hey. got four or five girls there. Okay, who's going to ask the first question from Melbourne girls? Um, I'm PG from Melbourne Girls College. And we were just wondering, can you tell us what, about your mindset in training and competing at the Olympics as well as the mental challenges you face, like nerves and body image? Yeah. 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 So with nerves, I actually have a sports psych that I see. Um, and I'm sure we've all heard nerves are good and, you know, just to embrace them, but it's not easy for anyone. Um, so I do a lot of <laughs> I do a lot of breathing techniques with my um, sports psych and we kind of just plan out exactly what she wants me to do with my coach, obviously, as well. What I'm meant to get done during the race, what body's doing and not actually... Like, I still obviously have days where I do stress, but um, it's just checking in with her and a lot of meditation and just talking about what we actually have to do on the track, not what every other girl's doing if that kind of makes sense. Um, for me, that's actually what helps me just like calm down, relax. It's just a race, it's just running. So I've got a family and a dog that love me. Uh, but with body image, I reckon I've probably struggled more with that um, because I fluctuate naturally. And I think that just comes from being a netballer. I was quite, I mean, I, was a, I wasn't heavy. I was just a different shape. I, was, I had a lot more muscle that I was carrying. So in the sprint world, that's the body I had. And uh, I guess it's a tough one for me because you just have to check in with your family and let them know how you're feeling. And at the end of the day, I've come to that terms with this is just my body. I don't really care about what other people say. We've all got our own flaws. And to attack someone else for that is just stupid. So for me, I just try to accept myself as who I am and do and eat the right things to fuel my performance, not to actually look good, if that makes sense. It took me, honestly, it took me up until this year to actually grasp it. Like, I struggled for 25 years to come to terms with it, but... Now I just need to feel good and to run fast. And I don't actually think about whatever I look like is just what I look like, you know? So. Um, we just have a second question. How does how has COVID-19 affected your training plan leading up to the Olympics? And how did you stay motivated in isolation? Um, yeah, that's a good one. To be honest, because we, like, because I run and I do distance, I'm actually quite lucky that I can just obviously leave my house and go for a jog. <laughs> um, so for me, the running part was fine. When we were in groups of two, I had Michelle Matthews, who's my coach, his daughter. We would train together most days out of the week. And then with the gym, I was fortunate enough that the VIS gave me equipment to use at home. Um, but I think, in a sense, it was obviously shattering that the Olympics had been postponed. But I just thought, you know what, it's like what everyone's saying. I can now get stronger, faster, fitter. And I can actually stay at home and just, like, hang out with friends and <laughs> I've got a little bit more time to just do what I want. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think that's the thing. I'm staying motivated through just trying different stuff. We're training, you know, we're hitting small training goals. I'm also doing other things like studying, studying Spanish, designing a little bit more, playing piano, because I've realised between now and next year's Olympics, we've got about, what is it, like just under a year now? Or just, no, just over a year, so 13 months. So I'm just kind of acting like a normal person, really, because I think if I started to obsess over it right now, then I wouldn't even make the Olympics because my brain would just be fried. So I don't think I'll get back in until maybe August, September. Yeah. All right, great question, girls. Stay right there. Okay, we're with Listerfield right now. Daniel, what's your qu question or what student has a question for us? So my question is, what inspired you to get into running? Um, what inspired me to get into running? Um, definitely the 2000 Olympics. I don't think <laughs> any of you were born when that was on. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I think it was definitely having them 
the, the Olympics being held in um, Sydney and obviously it being in Australia was quite motivating for me. And I kind of just love racing my sisters and competing with them in anything and everything. So once I realised I was faster than them, I thought, oh, I'll actually start little athletics and see if I can, you know, do something with it. So What was your time for the 400 metre? Oh, my PB was 51.25. Yeah. So 51 seconds. <laughs> and that was set in... 2016, yeah. Birmingham. Overseas, wasn't it? Yeah, Birmingham Diamond League, actually. Birmingham. Yeah. That's right, that's what I was going to say. That was a fantastic run, blistering yeah. run. But did you, while we're waiting for Listerfield to ask another question, did you shock yourself with the 51.25? I did, to be honest. I, well, you know, I came off of the plane in 51.8 shape. I had that at States, actually. Um, and I just, you always think, you know, when it's your first race in Europe, um, straight off a flight, you, I just didn't expect too much. I just kind of thought it'd be a nice little shakeout race. So to qualify in a PB and come third at my first Diamond League, it was honestly awesome, <laughs> looking back now. <laughs> Brilliant. Rock. And uh, what was it like to compete in front of a home crowd on the Gold Coast in, uh, in the Commonwealth Games? Um, pretty special, to be honest. Like, I won't lie, every, every crowd I've ever been in front of has been amazing and very loud, especially like Beijing 2015. But there's something about knowing your family's there, your friends are there, you know, all the Aussies are in the crowd and they're all just, you know, about you and cheering for you. For me, that was just insane. Like, it's just such a special moment that not too many people get to experience. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Now, in all these competitions we just mentioned, the overseas championships, that was a 400 run. But yeah. somewhere along the line, you've switched to 800. What yeah. caused you to double the distance? Did you not like the 400? Was it too short for you, mate? <laughs> um... To be honest, like, and this is in all honesty, I just fell out of love with the 400. Yeah, no, so I got back from three months of holidaying in Europe after the Com Games, and I was really questioning, do I want to stay in the sport or not? Do I want to try something different? But I knew I wanted to stay in the sport. Um, and I thought, well, I used to be a cross-country runner. I used to run the like, Why don't we just go back to it? And that's when I reached out to Liz uh, just before I got back from Europe. And, you know, come late August, we're at Newport Track just grinding away and, we didn't actually have, I had big aspirations to make the world champs in 2019. Uh, the overall goal was 2020, the Olympics. So to kind of fast track that and run two flight in my first season was just <laughs> better than anything. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, what's what's your aspiration now regarding the 800? Where do you want to take that? Um, I believe, and I think Liz would back me up hopefully, <laughs> we want to obviously make the Olympics, um, do run well at the Olympics. and. I'd love to go sub two and run, run sub two consistently because that could obviously turn into a, a final spot, a medal spot, an Australian record. So, yeah, for us at the moment, we're just trying to get as fit as we can and not really limit ourselves to anything. Now, you're a bit of a movie star too because you've, you've become vegan. I'm not sure what year you became vegan, but I know that you featured on the movie Game Changers, which yeah. we've watched as a family. As a result, we threw a whole stack of stuff out of the fridge and half of my family became vegan. I wasn't one of them. Um, and they certainly love the fact that um, they've become vegan. What was the motivation for you? Um, so yeah, I first became vegan in 20, at the end of 2014, start of 2015. And for me, it was all about the animals and the way they were treated and what it was doing to the environment. Um, my old partner I was with at the time had showed me a few documentaries and YouTube clips and it was just so heartbreaking that I just dropped everything and went vegan then and there. Yeah. <laughs> what was it like being in a movie though with such big names, Lewis Hamilton, um, obviously Sylvester Stallone, what was that like? Um, so it was funny, it was pretty cool, like, at the start, I remember I got the call when I was in Germany, and as soon as I heard Ben Cameron, the director of um, Titanic and Avatar, I was like, yes, I want to do it. And then they started to add in, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Lewis Hamilton and Chris Paul, the um, basketball player, and I just thought, what is my life? <laughs> what is going on? Um, so yeah, to be honest, the opportunities that came out of that were just insane. And the movie finally came out. I shot that when I was 21, straight after the Olympics. So 2019, when it finally came out, it was a pretty big year of celebrating for me. <laughs> it was nice. Very good. Now we've got some more questions coming from Melbourne 
Girls College. For our third question, we were just wondering, what are your current goals and how does the selection process work for the postponed Olympics? So my current goals, um, at the moment, I would like to run, we're doing time trials around the TAM. I'm keeping my goals small at the moment because the Olympics are so far away. So I'd like to get my TAM time down to about 13, 20 or lower. I'd like to do that. Um, we're going to do some races at the end of the season and I'd like to open up fast. That's another goal. Um, and just to qualify really early for the Olympics, I think. Um, so yeah, and the selection process, they haven't really come out with it yet because there was a ranking system, which almost basically guaranteed me a spot because I was in the top 25 in the world. But at the moment, I just said to Liz, because they're obviously delaying everything because no one knows what's going on, let's just get the qualifier as soon as we can. And then once it comes down to nationals, you know if we win, we're on, on the team. So yeah, it's a bit of a tough one for us athletes at the moment. <laughs> Very good question, girls. Stick, stay okay, right there. You. We've got some more. We'll come to you in just a second. We've got some more questions coming from Listerfield. Hi, I'm Deanna. And I was wondering how old you were when you knew you wanted to be a professional runner. Um, good question, Deanna. When I definitely knew, it was Probably when I was in so just before World Juniors and when they announced the Olympics in 2016 of Rio being the host city. So I was, I was sitting in high school, um, I was sitting in class, sorry, and they said, oh, Rio de Janeiro is the next host city of the Olympics. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to be a runner and I want to go to the Olympics and I want to do this and I want to do that. Mind you, I've been out of the sport for four years, so after <laughs> yeah. I called my old coach and said, you know, four years out, we're going to the Olympics. <laughs> Great question there, Deanna. Thank you for that. We're going to go to Melbourne Girls while you line up someone else to ask a question. Um, our fourth question was, how do you deal with negative comments on social media? Great <laughs> question. Um, it's quite funny. Like, I guess I'm going to be open and honest. I, get a, I do get a more so inboxes. Inboxes, sorry. Um, sometimes comments. And I think if the comments are super negative... I just delete them because no one deserves to see it and no one deserves that energy. But if I can kind of come back with an answer, then I will answer it because I've always been a firm believer in change and I don't believe in bullying whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I need to remind myself that these are normal people with normal lives, normal jobs, who are allowed to say anything behind a computer screen so it's easy. And I don't know them. I didn't know them before they commented, so I just don't let it affect me. You know what I mean? Um, there's no point, that's just a waste of time. But I will always try to call out people when necessary to try and hopefully change the narrative of what they're trying to say to me. And because you know I have a, a decent base, decent following, and I just want people to know that I'm a strong woman. I don't tolerate any of that stuff. So please just don't come for me and spread negative energy. I don't like you know sending a positive message. So yeah, if it gets too bad, then yeah, I'll take it further and report it. But at the same time, I just kind of remind myself like I don't know you. I don't really. There's no point in caring. <laughs> now, that's a great question, uh, Melbourne Girls. Just stay right there because I want to tackle uh, just a few little questions with Morgan, but I want you to listen to the answer because it's along these lines and along this topic. Morgan, obviously of late, the Black Lives Matter movement has been huge and I saw a fantastic interview with yourself and a couple of other athletes what does the Black Lives Matter mean to you for a woman who has an African-American father and, and you know, obviously you've had something to do with it. So what does it mean to you? Yeah, um, obviously it's been a really tough time. Uh, it's been, to be honest, it's been quite stressful because it's, I guess, reignited, suppressed feelings and emotions and even things I've had to deal with in the athletics world, in the modelling world, in the any kind of world that I'm in, that I step into, I've been a victim of that. Um, obviously not to the extent of what's going on in America, but it, de it definitely, I'd be lying if I said it didn't anger me. Um, it made me very frustrated and upset that people can't treat other humans with respect um, and they see colour before, you know, the, the purity of their heart and stuff. Um, but yeah, at the same time, I'm just trying to spread a positive message because I think it starts with myself, adults teaching the younger generation to hopefully bring them up in a more positive way in a positive environment um it is a slow and long process and it has 
you know, at the start of it, I had a few sleepless nights because I do have family in America who obviously are black and you do worry, you know what I mean? And it, it scares me for the future. Like, do I really want kids? Like, what, what's, what's, what about their safety? What am I going to do with them? So I just think, you know, I've got a voice and I've got a platform and I just want to try and, you know, change the way people see black people, really. Like, I just think it's unfair and cruel uh, because we're all human. <laughs> So, yeah, it's been a bit of a tough time, but we're getting through it. And we're working on a few projects and, yeah, I hope it, you know, we can all come out of this for the better. Thanks so much for sharing. Look, as someone who is a, a, a white male, it certainly has been an eye-opener for myself and for many around me. And do you take any comfort or comfort's probably the wrong word. Do you take, is there a light at the end of the tunnel or are you seeing any encouragement from progress that's being made with the protests that are going on for so long? Um, I am a little bit, um, but I think the thing, personally, I believe that we need to do more than just protest. I believe that it needs to actually be something that's taught in schools. I think the Aboriginal community yeah. needs to be acknowledged way more often than just one week or one day here and there. I just think it's just so silly, uh, like they're humans, they're not animals that just need to be put back into their box after we've done reconciliation week. I think they need to be appreciated because at the end of the day, they are the first people and they deserve it. Um, so it's nice that I, th I believe the younger generation are a lot more powerful than we've realized. Like mm -hmm. kids younger than me, they're incredible. And they've all switched on. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's a slow process, but now that the protests are done, there's information that needs to be spread languages that need to be learned on what to say and what not to say and um i think that's the thing everyone just needs to go on with an open mind and just be willing to listen not to argue but just listen about the experience because you wouldn't know unless you've gone through it so that's what i just try to tell people is just listen to the people that want to say something and need their voices to be heard um because they deserve it really otherwise we get nowhere yeah fantastic and <laughs> I think, look, I think you're right. We've got a long, long, long way to go um, in, in this area. And, you know, I think it's um, brilliant what's going on right now, but it's probably going to take a, a number of years, if not decades, to really remove it from the root of our system, in a sense. And I'm speaking on behalf of individuals in our community as well. Thanks so much for sharing there. But we yeah, back to Listerfield before we go back to Melbourne Girls College. Listerfield, I think, has got another question. Hi, I'm Matthew, and I was just wondering if you guys, like, how do you keep your stamina when you run? <laughs> um, question, Matthew. Definitely training and just keeping consistent with training as well. But like I said to the girls before, I do a lot of breathing, different types of breathing techniques to help calm everything down so I'm not, you know, feeling all frantic on the inside. Um, it's called, it, there are a few techniques that I learned from Wim Hof. He is an expert around it, and that's honestly helped me the most, I think, um, with stamina and all that. But for me, it's just listening to my coach and seeing what she wants, because at the end of the day, she's going to get me to the line at my fittest. So, yeah. Tell me, Morgan, is there times... I, I know Liz Matthews, she's a fantastic coach. Is there times when your coach says something to you and you go, oh, I really don't want to do that? <laughs> To be honest, almost every session. <laughs> she, I love her. She's an amazing coach and she's a very strong woman and that's what I really appreciate about, appreciate about her, sorry. Um, but at the end of the day, it is my job and I understand that I have to get out there and absolutely murder myself on the track because that's how training become, uh, racing becomes a lot easier. But yeah, it happens every day and I just think I can complain and I can, I can suck, but you know, it's only an hour and a half of running. Um, so yeah, if I'm more grateful, like, what does my running get me? It gets me around the world. I get to meet people. I get to go to events and stuff. And I really have to tell myself, like, it's all worth it in the end. So yeah, definitely. You have certainly work. do put a lot of effort into your training and you're a very disciplined young woman. And, you know, when you say you traveled, I would hate to know how many frequent flyer miles you've got because you seem to be <laughs> everywhere. Now we've got Melbourne girls got another question for us. How did you juggle school commitments with your competitive goals? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> 
you may not want to hear the answer to this one, I think, is what Morgan's face is saying. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be This is just my experience. Let's just clear that, okay? This is just, this doesn't apply to everyone, okay? I'm just going to put that out there now. <laughs> um, so I went to Williamsburg High School. I, this is just a quick bit of background. I got a an offer for netball to Wesley. It wasn't never really like trying to be anything because I didn't want to commit to the travel and stuff. Um, and for me, I knew I had to go to school because it's what my mom was paying for. So I did the right thing, but it was tough for me because I, <laughs> okay, I got out of school through school sports. So I tried hockey and like soccer and swimming and that. So, <laughs> so school took a back step because to be honest, deep down in my heart, I just knew I was going to the Olympics. As bad as it sounds, I know it sounds quite arrogant, but there's just something inside of me that put all my eggs into one basket. Um, but now that I'm studying again, okay, so <laughs> I am getting the study in. I always going to take time to do it me because I understand it has to be done. It's one of those things where I'm probably on the tail end of my career um, and I know athletics won't last forever. So I think I just need to understand like, all right, I have time for uni here. I have time for athletics here, which still takes up more time than uni. But then I also make sure I have free time to spend with my friends. I think it's just balancing and understanding that you need to make sacrifices sometimes for work, uni, training and leisurely commitments. Um, which takes a while to actually grasp, but at the end of the day, it's all a part of growing up. And, you know, some days you're going to have to study for an exam and miss training, and that's okay. You're still young. Like, you can make training up or vice versa. So, yeah, just having fun with it and not taking things too seriously. It's a tough one for me because, yeah, like I said, I just I kind of knew where I was going at such a young age. Yeah. Excellent answer there, Morgan. That's um, honest, and we love honesty as well. Um, look, we're going to go to one last question from Listerfield, and then we'll just probably close off the show. Listerfield, what is your question for Morgan? How do you stay on top of your injuries while still being an elite athlete? Oh, question. yes. So um, I've realised the older I get, the faster my body breaks down. I will religiously every week see my physio and get a massage on a Monday and a Wednesday. Um, and I, you know, touch wood, haven't been injured because of it. Um, but I need to understand, like, I had to understand that that's a part of my training. I just see rehab as training. You know, like I do my reps and then I'll go home and stretch and roll because it's what gets me back out onto the track the next day. So like, if I'm injured, I allow my body just to rest. I don't try to force anything because I know I'm just going to, you know, hurt myself in the long run. and. I always try to take injury as a blessing. Like, okay, this is my body telling me I need a bit of a break. And then I'll go and shift my training to rehab training and do everything I can do to get back to the track. So, yeah, I just try for, especially being so young, when you do get injured, try not to obsess over it and think it's the end of the world because it's really not. It is tough, but it's probably, you know, you just need a rest and try something else in the meantime. You know, try something new while you are letting your body recover. Great. Hey, Mr. Thomas and class, thank you so much for joining us today. Kids, we hope you enjoy your school holidays, your last day of term today, so you're probably super excited. But Daniel, thanks for making the time and having your class on board and giving up your lunch time for that. We're going to disconnect no, you now and go to Melbourne See Girls. You guys. Thanks, thank you. All right, one last just g'day from Melbourne Girls. Melbourne, thanks so much, Melbourne Girls. Thanks so much for joining us today, giving up your lunchtime for being part of that. Mr. Farah Kavassi, he's a brilliant teacher, that young man. Um, we hope you enjoy your holidays, girls, and we hope to see you at another show coming up sometime soon. I'll see you guys at the end. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Brilliant stuff. Look, we'll, f we'll wind up now. What's next for Morgan Mitchell? W what does the world hold for Morgan Mitchell? Because in all honesty, you you are traveling a lot. You're here and there from America. Um, you've obviously got a lovely young man in America in there as well. But tell us what's next for you. Um, uh, next for me is tonight I'm going to my best friend's birthday party. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> What's next for me? Yeah, that's a tough one. I've actually, now that restrictions are being eased, I've got a few commitments with sponsors. So I'll be in state well, for the next two, two and a half months in and out. And then I'm actually enjoying just staying home and grinding, really. So I'll pretty much just be at Newport Track most days and really just waiting until we can start competing again. I'm hoping to compete at Zatapak. So I'm pretty sure that might be where I open up in a 1500. Right. 15, <laughs> wow. Now tell me, obviously, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the most amount of time that you've spent at home in a very long time. Would that be right? 100%. So this is, we worked it out the other day, this is my first winter in eight years. I've been away wow. overseas for, you know, months on end sometimes. I think my last overseas for eight months. Um, back in, uh, but it's, yeah, it's definitely new for me. I'm... I hope to not do it again. <laughs> I realize it's not going to be my thing. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, that's just part of the job, really. And I definitely, definitely miss it. But I'm hoping to get up to the snow because I never get to experience winter. So if you want to do it, I might as well go and pack the snow board or something. Yeah. I like to do it. Because, I mean, basically, sport has really set you up, not only for sport, but for life in general. You have a whole bunch of sponsors. You've got a great following as well. So you're not putting all your eggs in one basket, which is brilliant. Morgan, thanks so much for joining us. You are a superstar. We certainly love uh, championing you, and we will continue to champion you as you chase your dream and chase your goal. And as you represent Australia, we'll be on the front foot telling everyone how great you are and you're a fantastic role model too. So thanks Heath, for giving us some of your time. I know you're very busy, but we appreciate that and we'll be in touch. Yeah, definitely, thanks for having me guys. Have fun on the school holidays as well. <laughs> no worries, thanks Heath, for joining us and we'll see you next week everyone for Cole Pierce. So that'll be good. Thanks Morgan. See ya.